But I feel so tall in Toy Town. I take my car and I drive afar in Toy Town. There's Mr. Plod and a dog called Bumpy. Hello, Mr. Plod. Get down, Bumpy. I pass the ark, the Noah's live there. And so does the elephant, and so does the bear. Now that they say it's market day in Toy Town. If you have the fare, I'll take you there through Toy Town. There's Biggis who lives by the old oak tree And we have adventures, Biggis and me Why don't you come and join in the fun Just follow me, cause it's only begun I'm not I'm not Big Ears, the brownie, was looking forward to his day in Toy Town I'll go to the market and uh, I'll have an ice cream, and I'll... Why don't you look where you're going? Big Ears asked crossly. I'm terribly sorry. Big Ears looked a bit closer. You're an odd-looking person, he said rudely. Who are you? I don't know. Don't know? No, said the odd-looking person, nodding his head vigorously. When you say no, do you mean yes? No and he nodded his head harder than ever. If you can't say what you mean, don't say anything at all. I'm sorry. I can't help it. I want to know who you are. Why the secrecy? I ran away from my toy maker. Why? He made a lion. I don't like lions. They frighten me. So where are you going now? I don't know. I'd like to find some food. I'm rather hungry and thirsty. In that case, Big Ear said, You'd better climb on my bicycle. I'm going to Toy Town. We can get you plenty of food and drink there. By the way, what's your name? I haven't got one. You'll have to shout. I can't hear. I haven't got one. I'll give you a name, Big Ear said. I'll call you Noddy, because you will keep nodding your head. Whatever's that? Noddy was again so frightened he nearly fell over. As a train, of course. Have you never seen a train before? No. My goodness, you are ignorant. All aboard for Toy Town. All aboard for Toy Town. Come on, Big Ear said, and pushed Noddy into a carriage. Noddy catapulted in, followed by Big Ears and his bicycle. You can't bring that in here, said a snooty voice. It was a pink toy cat. There isn't time to put it in the guard's van. It's not allowed, a toy soldier added. What a peculiar person. The pink cat was examining Noddy closely. Who is he? He's called Noddy. Where do you come from? The pink cat asked rudely. How? It was one of the dolls. Mind that bicycle. You've got it on my foot. Oh, I'm sorry, Big Ears said. The whistle blew again. Noddy nearly fell off his seat in surprise and started nodding even more. What's he keep nodding for? He can't help it. Oi, 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 what's going on here then? No bicycles allowed in carriages. And you know that, Big Ears. Well, I'm sorry. Big Ear said, but I didn't have time to put it in the guard's van. You've got time now. Take it out of here. So Big Ears took the bicycle out of the carriage, and Noddy was left alone with the pink toy cat and the doll and the soldier. I'm going to be late, the toy cat said snootily. I don't know why we should put up with these delays. Neither do I, sniffed the doll. Toy Town train isn't what it used to be. All kinds of undesirable persons one has to travel with. Fortunately, Big Ears came back at that moment. We're off, said Noddy in delight. But I can't see the view from here. Could I change? I always sit in the corner seat, the pink toy cat said. So you'll have to sit where you are, unless the toy soldier moves. You'd better come here. Help! 
What's all this then? Oh, it's you lot again. You toys. Nothing but trouble. Opening doors while the train's in motion. You know it's not allowed. I didn't open the door, the toy soldier said furiously. It flew open. Then it wasn't shut properly. Who was last in? He looked pointedly at Big Ears. I'm sorry. It was all my fault. Noddy spoke up bravely. The toy soldier moved to give me the corner seat. I wanted to see outside because I've never been in a train before. Never been in a train before? The guard looked incredulous. Hurry up. What's going on? We're late. This train was supposed to leave two minutes ago. Either we go or I'll have my money back. That's enough of that, the guard shouted back. The train will go when I say it goes, and if you don't like it, you can walk. And he turned to Noddy. Have a good journey, he said kindly. And I hope you like Toy Town. And he blew his whistle. Noddy had never seen anywhere so beautiful. What a lovely place. What's the matter, Noddy? It's that... that uh, I'm so hungry. We'll soon deal with that. Come on, there's a cafe over there. Big Ears bought Noddy a steak pie and potatoes and peas and a glass of orange aid. <sighs> this is the best meal I've ever had. Noddy had never felt so happy, but not for long. A big toy policeman came up to him. Hello, 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 and who may you be? I'm Noddy. I didn't ask you your name, I asked who you were. You're very rude, Big Ears said. You might at least tell him who you are. He's never seen a policeman before. <coughs> PC Plod of Toy Town Constabulary at your service. Noddy couldn't help giggling. Mr. Plod looked so funny. It's no laughing matter. Mr. Plod took out his pencil and notebook. I want to know if you're a toy. Only toys are allowed in Toy Town. I think I'm a toy, Noddy said. At least, I hope I am. Well, this is a matter for Toy Town Court. Kindly appear at the court at 6 p.m. tonight. He's not going to send me away, is he? I hope not. Big Ears didn't know what to do to keep Noddy in Toy Town, but he showed him round. He showed him the station and the market and the fair. He took him to Monsieur Polly's garage to look at all the new cars. And he took him to the Ark. What a funny place, Noddy said. Whatever is it? You are ignorant. It's where all the animals live with Mr. and Mrs. Noah. Elephants and giraffes and kangaroos? Of course. But Big Ears forgot to tell Noddy about the lions. Do you think I could stay here to see them? I love animals. Good idea, Big Ears said. Go and introduce yourself to Mr. and Mrs. Noah. I'll be back soon. And Big Ears walked away. There was no reply from the Ark, but Noddy could hear noises, so he knew there must be someone inside. Is, uh, anyone at home? There certainly was. Hundreds of animals. And they all came pouring out of the Ark. Mr. and Mrs. Noah were on their way home. My goodness, Noah, I'm so glad... Mrs. Noah stopped in surprise. <gasps> Go back in. Go back in at once, she cried. To Noddy's amazement, all the animals put their tails between their legs and crept shamefacedly back into the ark. At least, almost all the animals. Noddy didn't see the one that hid behind the bush. <laughs> I'd better go and find Big Ears, he thought. I seem to have caused a lot of trouble here. <coughs> then he heard a growl, and then a scream. He didn't remember that he was frightened of lions. He rushed at it, waving his arms about. The lion scampered back into the ark. Thank you, thank you. The little doll threw her arms around Noddy. You've saved my life. At that moment, Big Ears appeared. Time to come to Toy Town Court. Noddy didn't even have time to tell him about the lion. Silence, the judge shouted. 
Are you the accused? Yes. Who are you? I'm Noddy. Ah, yes, I believe you want to uh, take up a residence in Toy Town. Yes, Your Honour. Are you a uh, toy? Yes, said Noddy. No, said Mr. Plod. S Silence, said the judge. If you are a toy, are you a good toy? Yes, said Noddy. No, said Mr. Plod. Silence, said the judge. Have you done anything wrong since you came to Toy Town? I'm afraid I let the animals out of the ark. Six soldiers forward. You are to leave Toy Town immediately. This uh, uh, toy is to be escorted out of the town. The court is now uh, adjourned. No, no, stop. It was the little doll. Don't send him away. He saved my life. And she told them about Noddy and the lion. Oh, that puts an entirely different light on the uh, matter, the judge said. Noddy, I order you to stay in Toy Town. All the toys cheered. Silence, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Noah. Why did you leave the ark doors uh, unlocked? I'm afraid we forgot, Your Honor. Forgetfulness is no excuse. I, I shall make you pay a fine. You are to uh, help this nodding man find a house. No need, no need. It was Mr. Tubby Bear. There is a residence empty next to us. Perhaps he could have that. P.C. Plod, kindly investigate. And with that, the judge adjourned the court. There it is. There it is. And there, in front of Noddy, was the most beautiful house he had ever seen. All that? For me? He couldn't believe it was true. Yes, yes, the toys all cried. It's a bit bare. Mrs. Noah was looking anxiously at the little room. You'll have to have some furniture. There's no bed or anything. Well, we'll go to the market and buy him some. After all, it was our fault that he was nearly sent away. Carelessness, sheer carelessness, Mr. Plod muttered to himself. I'd better note down these proceedings. And he took out his notebook and pencil. But no one was going to wait for Mr. Plod to write it all down. The toys led Noddy out of the house and towards the market square. Oh, wait for me. I've no money. No money at all, Noddy said. Well, make a collection, Big Ear said. And before P.C. Plod knew what was happening, his helmet was whipped off his head and put on the ground, and all the toys threw pennies into it until it was so full they could hardly lift it. Most irregular. Most irregular. But he didn't mind too much. And then Big Ears rushed up to Noddy and put on his head a pointed blue hat with a bell at the end of it. Now, every time you nod your head, a little bell will ring. The toys cheered yet again. This is the happiest day of my life, Noddy said. Big as in me, 
why don't you come and join in the fun? Just follow me, cause it's only begun. I'm naughty. I'm naughty. I'm naughty. Milk out, milk out, the milkman called. Goodness, Naughty said. Is it breakfast time already? We'll make an early start in Toy Town. One pint or two. Noddy nodded. I say which you want, said the milkman. Not once for one bottle, and twice for two bottles. But take no notice of my nodding. My head just nods. And if it nods too often, you leave me too much milk. I only want one pint, please. That'll be one penny. One penny? Noddy looked very sad. Perhaps I'd better not have any milk today. I haven't got any money. That's all right, Noddy. Pay me later. And whistling cheerfully, the milkman went next door. I'd better get a job so I can pay you back, Noddy said. Why don't you try Angela Dole at Four Chimneys House? There's spring cleaning this week. What a good idea, Noddy thought. He knocked on the door. It was answered by a doll in a big white apron. Oh, what do you want? She said. Are you the chimney sweep? Or are you the laundry man? I'm Noddy, Noddy said. I heard you were spring cleaning and I uh, wondered if uh, I could help. I'll be very good at spring cleaning. I've plenty of spring in me. It's nothing to do with it, silly. We're spring cleaning the house because it's springtime. Perhaps the mistress will let you help. We're always glad of an extra pair of hands. You can come in. The mistress was a beautiful dog with shining hair and big blue eyes. Noddy was so impressed, he bowed. The uh, sweep hasn't come, she said. I suppose you don't know how to sweep chimneys. Ha, I'm sure I could sweep your chimneys, he said. I'd like to try. Noddy picked up a long black brush. He poked it up the chimney and waited for the soot to come down. I wonder if I'm through to the top, he thought. Hmm, no soot. I'd better do it again. The little doll ran outside. Isn't this fun, she said. I wonder where Noddy's brush is. Oh, it's coming through a chimney. It's gone. No, oh, there it is, in another chimney. <laughs> Noddy is doing well. Oh, it's gone again. No, there it is. He's cleaning chimney number three now. Only one more to do. Oh, he's gone back to number one again. What is he doing? He should be doing number four. There it is. He's cleaned it. Well done, Noddy. But Noddy was covered in soot from top to toe. You'd better have a wash, the mistress said. Then you can scrub the kitchen floor. Noddy set to. He scrubbed and scrubbed. Won't the beautiful doll be pleased, he thought. Perhaps she'll give me another job. Then I can pay the milkman and buy enough food to stock my larder. He turned to pick up the bucket. Oh, that's funny, he said. He was here a minute ago. <laughs> Someone was laughing. Do you want your bucket back? Look out, he shouted, but he was too late. The little doll has spilt the bucket of dirty water all over Noddy's shoes. What's going on here? A stern voice said. It was the mistress doll. What do you think you're doing? The little doll girl looked at Noddy. Eh, it was an accident, but don't worry, I'll clean it up. It won't take very long, he said. That's a very good job you've done, said the mistress doll. 
And she paid him handsomely. Oh, thank you, thank you, said Noddy. If you want more work, try Monsieur Pulley at the garage. Now, if there was one thing Noddy loved, it was cars. Excuse me, Noddy said shyly. Do you by any chance have a job for me? Monsieur Polly looked him up and down. Well, my man, he is away. You can have his duties until he returns. I love cars, Noddy thought as he looked round. If only I could have one of my own. A yellow one, just like that. He set to work happily. He washed all the cars and polished them until he could see his own reflection in them. Monsieur Polly was very pleased and at the end of the day gave him two pennies. I feel quite rich, Noddy thought, but not rich enough to buy my own car. I do wish I could buy this one. Noddy worked at the garage for a whole week. On his last day, he worked extra hard. Oh, I do feel hot, he said. He sadly packed up his duster and polish. This is the last time, he sighed. Hey! Oh, I'm sorry. I'd completely forgotten you, Noddy. I will now give you your last two pence. I must lock up now. Goodbye. Bonne nuit. Never mind, Noddy thought. I'll soon get another job, and who knows, one day I might save enough to buy a car of my own. <coughs> and he fell asleep. <coughs> Noddy woke up with a start. Oh dear he said. I haven't had my supper. Who's that? It's me, without my hat. I must go and look for it. Noddy wasn't feeling very brave. It was dark and lonely. Ooh, he shivered. I don't like being alone in the dark. But he wasn't alone. A shaft of light came from the open garage door and Noddy could hear noises coming from inside. Oh, Monsieur Polly must be working late. I do hope it's not my fault. Suddenly, a car shot out into the road. It was driven by a goblin, and another, and another. Why don't you look where you're going, Jay Walker? Noddy ran to the back of the garage. There, in an old shed, was a rickety red car. He jumped in, pulled the starter, and roared out after the departing goblins. All through Toy Town they went, and out into the open country. Faster and faster they drove, up and down the country lanes. Noddy felt as though he were flying. Noddy landed by a tree, clutching his steering wheel. A solitary tire rolled past. Before Noddy had time to recover, he heard a stern but familiar voice. What on earth do you think you're doing? It was Big Ears. I'm chasing, Noddy said and told him all about it. Are you hurt? Big Ears asked anxiously. I don't think so, Noddy said, but I'm not sure. Uh, come into my toadstool house. You can stay with me for the night. I do hope Monsieur Polly won't be cross about his little red car, Noddy said. It's quite smashed up. I think he'd be very grateful to you. Look, Noddy, he added, you go to sleep and I'll see if I can find the cars. 
So Noddy snuggled down on Big Ear's settee, and Big Ears went, all alone, to Goblin Village. The inhabitants of Toy Town were in a rage that morning. And as for poor Monsieur Polly, he was crying. All his cars had gone, even the little red one. But Mr. Plod was in charge of the situation. We will uh, have to examine the place of the crime, he announced. Aha, he called. Aha. He held up Noddy's blue hat. A vital piece of evidence. It was at that moment that Noddy and Big Ears arrived at the garage. Does uh, this piece of incriminating evidence belong to you? Oh, I don't know about uh, in, uh, cri in cri in cri incriminate, uh, but it's my hat. It was Noddy, the little nodding man, the little nodding man, the toy shouted. He did it. He stole the cars. You just listen to me, Mr. Plod, Big Ears said furiously. You just listen to me. And you show respect to an officer of the law. It wasn't Noddy who stole the cars. It was the goblins. Noddy went to the garage to fetch his hat, and he tried to stop them. Do you wish to make a written statement? We need a written statement, you know. Look here, Plod. I want Noddy set free. In fact, if you don't set him free this minute, I shan't tell you where the cars are. Perhaps we have been a little hasty? Monsieur Polly whispered to Mr. Plod. He wanted his cars back. Uh, this, uh, Brownie, says you chased the car thieves last night. Noddy was too frightened to speak. That's correct, Big Ear said. And what's more, if we don't hurry to Goblin Village, you may never see the cars again. It was a strange procession that arrived in Goblin Village. I'll deal with this, Big Ear said. It's my beat, Mr. Plob protested. It's my village. Big Ear strode forward. Come out here, Gobbo, he ordered. I have a visitor for you. Uh, you again? I might have known. I'll have those cars back fast, Gobbo pointed at the old oak tree. Ah, uh, better get them, I suppose, he grumbled. Quelle joie, Monsieur Polly murmured as the first car drove out. There were goblins everywhere. I shall find every single goblin in this village, Mr. Plod announced. Every goblin is to pay one penny. I shall expect you to deliver the money this afternoon. And if you don't, you'll find yourselves in clink. Everyone got into their stolen cars and drove back to Toy Town. Monsieur Polly took Noddy to the garage. You had better keep your eyes shut, he said sternly. Why? Noddy asked, trying not to peep. We have a little surprise for you. And he led him into the market square. Can I open them now? Noddy asked. A little, Monsieur Polly said. Oh! Noddy's eyes nearly fell out of his head. A car for you. Hurrah for Noddy! All Toy Town was assembled in the square. For me? Really, for me? It was too good to be true. It was the most beautiful car Noddy had ever...